Well, it's been almost exactly two years, and finally, the pandemic is dissipating. We made our choices, we learned our lessons, and it's a new dawn. And it's a new season for the year 2022, and a new time for all of us to embrace new life, new opportunities, new abundance. And while we balance our care and genuine prayer for peace and the awareness of a world that still includes unthinkable tragedy and sorrow and even war, we also are grateful for how blessed we are so let us use this spring of 2022 to take everything that we've learned, clear the past, and move forward in gratitude for the freedom that we have, for the blessings of our lives, for the opportunity to come together again in community, online, and yes, in person. We are all part of the awakening world, and we all have the roles that we're playing as individuals and collectively. We are the imaginal cells finding each other to create a beautiful, incredible butterfly out of the old paradigm. So welcome to spring of 2022, Welcome to the Awakening World. We come from the same source, a powerful love force. We're coming together, stronger than ever, not divided. We come from the same source, a powerful love force. We're coming together, hear the call, you are invited. We come from the same source, a powerful love force. Welcome everybody to the Awakening World and to our Earth Day weekend. This is the third year now that I've been honored to be able to doing shows honoring Earth Day for the Global Peace Tribe. And I want to welcome everybody. I want to welcome all of our friends in the Zoom room. I see a lot of our regulars. And please, everybody let us know where you're from geographically. I also want to welcome everybody watching on YouTube and Facebook. And a big hello to our friends uh, watching on Unify. And of course, also want to thank John and Summer Raymer and the Sign Network for getting us out, sometimes as many as 100 groups and pages. I also want to acknowledge any of you that are watching the replay. Our statistics show that about 40% of the people who end up watching this show watch the recording, watch the replay. So whether you're with us live in the Zoom room or on Unify, Facebook, YouTube, or watching a recording, welcome. And let's all really take time with tonight's show and throughout this weekend to remember our own unique relationship to our true mother, our beloved Mother Earth, Gaia. And I'm really grateful for uh, Robin Streckler. I'm going to introduce her first because Robin has done a wonderful job of helping to um, wrangle a lot of our favorite environmental leaders and teachers. She's done a terrific job. And tomorrow night, we're going to get to hear an amazing reading of her screenplay. So Robin, thank you. You've done a terrific job this weekend. And Really grateful yeah. to be collaborating with you. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure and um, nothing better than getting these messages out about the earth. Yeah, it's very important. So thank you. And uh, one of the people that I'm really grateful, he was on with us last year and he's back with us again. This is Dwayne Elgin, who is one of the really truly great pioneers in uh, leading the way for us all. Um, and Dwayne is an internationally recognized Earth citizen. He's written five books, and his most recent book is Choosing Earth. And it's available for free. We're going to show you how to do that in a little bit on his website, choosingearth.org. Dwayne is beloved throughout our 
Global Peace Tribe. He's a longtime media activist working for strong democracy. So welcome, Dwayne. It's really good to have you with us. Thank you so much. Good to be back again. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. Keeping keeping it up. And, and I appreciate, you know, Dwayne has been going from one show to the next, to the next, to the next. <laughs> so thank you, Dwayne, for being with us. Yes. I'm also really grateful to have my fellow evolutionary leader and one of the real leaders of the Evolutionary Leaders Network. This is Kurt Johnson. And Kurt's been on Saturday Night Live and Awakening World before. But any of you who don't know him, he's a prominent figure on many international committees, including the United Nations. He's also an author um, or co-author of several award-winning books, including Our Moment of Choice, which is such an important book. We're doing an entire weekend dedicated to that in early May. So, um, Kurt, thank you so much. He has a PhD, by the way, in evolution and ecology. And are you ready for this? He's authored over 200 scientific articles and books. So thank you so much um, for also being with us and for your dedication, Kurt. Thanks, Doug. Um, our final official guest tonight um, are two people I love and adore. In fact, I kind of get to say that I officiated their wedding. Um, and destiny made nine her, years ago, <laughs> nine years ago. My gosh. Awesome. Uh, and they have two children since then. Um, mm -hmm. and, and also we're going to hear them play music. We're also going to hear them talk a little bit about their lifestyle, living in a very sustainable way in Hawaii. So mm -hmm. we're looking forward to hearing about that. And I got to say, destiny made her very first time ever playing in front of an audience right here in my home. And I can remember that night. Uh, it was our, our housewarming night. So uh, you've come a long way recording mm -hmm. albums and CDs and making music, making babies, making a beautiful <laughs> life. So it's great to have you guys with us. Welcome Thank you, aboard. Scott. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go initially to kind of a round uh, table. So I'm going to add um, everybody. And I think let's just kind of start with each person's opening thoughts of as you look at Earth Day, here we are, and we've all been through many Earth Days. What does this particular Earth Day mean to each of you? And let's go ahead and start with Kurt, and then we'll hear from Dwayne. Yeah, thank you. You know, there's absolutely no doubt that we're at a historic crossroads in our history on this planet. And in that sense, there's always challenges, which can be the potential bad news. But we also know there's so much good news. And the real good news is the message from the heart and the millennial message of the wisdom traditions. And the fact that now that modern evolutionary biology understands that the course of evolution itself always chooses for the good of the whole. It's we human beings that get in the way. But we know now from what's called group and multi-level natural selection, that nature always works toward the good. So we're actually destined, to use destiny's name, to be altruistic beings. So let's not stand in the way and let's, as Scott and everyone else is doing, let's get the show on the road. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. You know, something interesting I asked where people are from, we've got people from Unify on our Unify channel from Tasmania, Cancun, Albania, Las Vegas, and then in our Zoom room, we've got uh, everybody from Topanga and Chatsworth, Spain, San Diego, Ecuador, Vancouver, British Columbia, Ashland, Oregon, uh, all over California, Seattle, the Oregon coast, Colorado. So I just really appreciate that we have people listening to us from all over the world and all over the United States. Uh, truly, we are the Global Peace Tribe. Dwayne, I'm going to pop the spotlight on you, and I'd love to hear kind of what this particular Earth Day is meaning to you. <clears throat> well, uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, this Earth Day has significance uh, for me, certainly. Um, we're in, in big trouble as a species much more uh, than we know. And I've been doing, looking at the research now for just 50 years, uh, watching this slow-moving catastrophe take hold. 
and it's starting now the turbulence in the atmosphere and and other extremes it's starting to take hold so this earth day is one more wake-up call but boy i tell you the uh, mother nature is helping ring the bell of wake-up time uh, for us and so uh, i look forward to speaking now with my brother kurt about what we might uh, begin we will bring Kurt back on and, and some to talk about some of the solutions but let's go ahead and talk for a minute about some of the scary stuff um, I was trained as a climate project presenter by Al Gore uh, 12 years ago. And one of the things that's startling is even the worst predictions about the melting of the, the of Antarctica and the polar ice caps, it's even faster than the worst predictions 10 years right. ago. Right. Um, uh, I just heard yesterday that the projection is that within 20 years, there'll be almost no fish left in the ocean. Yeah. Um, Claire Dubois talks a lot about the changing of the Gulf Stream and what that means. Uh, Extraordinary. Are there some things that you want to share? I mean, we're, we're sure. not going to spend all time scaring people, but let's, yeah. hey, well, let's, let's, we need to embrace what's really happening but, here. Well, they, they, really, it's uh, not just to add scary things to the conversation. It's to bring awareness to what's actually going on. And in typical conversation, we bring up one, maybe climate change, and maybe some aspect of climate change uh, and such. And that's about enough for people to hear. But the reality is the world is moving into this most unique configuration ecologically uh, and geologically as it has been in the last 10,000 years. And so uh, this is an entirely unique situation uh, for the Earth. Um, and so, uh, once again, that pushes back and it says, okay, now what are you going to do? And time is running out. And scientist after scientist has given us to the end of this decade, and we knew this a, a long ago, but uh, again and again, we are being told roughly in the time frame of this decade, if we don't begin making drastic reductions, we are going to head into irreversible change and that we will not be able to go back in any uh, significant way. So um, the challenge in my mind is how to awaken enough of us fast enough uh, to turn the corner towards another configuration of living uh, on this earth. And we can come back after a bit if, you, if you'd like, but the answer in my mind is uh, singular, it's media. Uh, and the mass media is the mass mind of our mass society. And unless we begin changing the mass media significantly, and I'm happy to speak about that. We will not change the mass mind, and we will not change the mass future that we're on right now. And so there, if there is a pivot in this, and I'd love to speak more about this, but it is media, and it's both television media as well as internet-based based media, and the potential of actually bringing those two together, not only nationally, but now globally. So... Let me pause there and give uh, my brother Kurt a chance because media is so critical to civic society and our ability to understand what's going on as a civic society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dwayne, thank you. And uh, Dwayne and I had a chance to correspond a bit before this. And um, what's interesting, as I mentioned, science has a word catastrophe and it defines catastrophe as anything that changes things so suddenly and unexpectedly that it completely upends what's normal. Best example that we know of is when the meteor hit near the Yucatan, wiped out the dinosaurs, and it took millions of years in that case for the earth to actually come back to a new normal. So catastrophe is like that. It's like when you break the cue ball, you break the billiard balls on the table and it's a new game. Now, right now we actually have four potential catastrophes that we're facing, of which the climate one, which is so obvious, is, is just one. One would be enough. We actually have four. And the other one, of course, we just lived through it for three years, is the danger of pandemic disease, 
and it completely upending how we live our daily lives and how we run our economies and cultures. But there are two others, and they're absolutely germane to what we just talked about, and they're very often not talked about. And one is called the information catastrophe. And you know as well as I do, one of the problems all around the world now is that people don't know what's true. People don't know what a fact is. Uh, information is either so controlled or so out of control that people honestly can't even know what's true. Certainly a planet in that kind of a situation can't make good decisions for itself. And then the last one is another one we don't think of, but all you gotta do is watch TV. And that's called the governance catastrophe. And that is that for some reason, uh, maybe it's our chimp and bonobo gene, but we, we still are fascinated with autocrats, dictators, power mongers, and people who are abusers. And we see in the current situation that we really have very few means and remedies to control those types of bad behavior at a global level. So that's what we're actually up against. But you're absolutely right that this tipping of what the consciousness is, the sense of the worldview of people on the street, every time there's been a revolution at a global level, it was because there was a complete upending of the worldview from the street level up. And I totally agree with, with Duane and what Scott's saying all the time, not only media, but the arts, reaching out to the heart, reaching to the heart of people that understands you know, love, empathy, reciprocity, mutuality. That's our real hope uh, is to use the media in those directions. So I could say more, but those I think are just the really kind of the banner headlines. You know, speaking of the media, I'm gonna bring Robin Streichler on. Um, because Robin has written a screenplay, an environmental screenplay, and we're going to do tomorrow night during our after show, we are going to have a, a, a reading of a portion of it. So Robin, kind of addressing exactly what Kurt just said, what would you like to add? I'd like to add that I'm kind of astounded that the direction of the conversation is going this way. It's kind of like a theme that's just arising in our show this weekend. Um, my undergraduate degree, I made it up in 19, I graduated 1986, and it was approaching, uh, approaching environmental problems through media. <laughs> and I, I saw what you're saying way back then. And um, I chose to go uh, two routes. I did work for CNN and CBS affiliate in Boston and um, some other places and tried to kind of figure out why they weren't putting on more environmental uh, programming, you know, and, and attention to environmental problems. And um, I did, I did write about that. And I said that news is selective. They're, they may be objective, but they're selective and they're selective for um, immediate crisis situations. And what happened was they never paid attention to the slow brewing dangers that we were, um, you know, just contributing to uh, unconsciously, or perhaps some were conscious, but we couldn't, um, we couldn't, uh, uh, you know, kind of change the, the wheels of uh, powers that wanted to, uh, you know, the, the, the things we all know, the, the, the poisons that are put into our uh, waters and air, there was sort of, you know, the people with the money who didn't want to, um, who wanted to cut corners, um, had, had the money and the power to influence our government to be able to do that. So um, these were kind of insidious things that were happening. Um, so anyway, just, just want to wrap up this part by saying, yes, I went into the news arena in, in terms of looking at all that and how can we get more environmental reporting. It's a different mindset. It's You can't do a crisis mindset. You have to do a long-term mindset and look in places where we're just not looking. Um, and secondly, yes, I went the creative route and I am determined to bring um, a transformational and, and a positive vision for the future to mainstream entertainment. And that's exactly why I studied to be a, a screenwriter that could write a mainstream script that would be um, appealing to a broad audience 
that has a positive vision for the future, um, especially environmentally. And that's what we're not seeing. So thank you. Oh, well, beautiful. And uh, thank you. For, and we're going to hear from Robin throughout the weekend. She's going to be with us all weekend long. And again, tomorrow night, since we just talked about it, I'm going to go ahead and show it now. Tomorrow night is this special reading during the after show of her screenplay, Getting Back to Jane, which is an environmental uh, theme. And it's going to be a really fun reading. Uh, so definitely, everybody, make sure you join us tonight, tomorrow night and kick back and be with us for a while because the after show is going to be really powerful. So thank you. I want to go thank to my you. friends in Hawaii. Uh, this is Destiny and Andrew. Um, and they're going to play music a little bit later, but I'd love to start just by asking you to share a little bit about you've made a really powerful choice. You picked up your family. You moved from the mainland to Hawaii into an environmentally sustainable world. So tell us about that. Well, yeah, we were in Ashland, Oregon for nine years. And there came a certain point where in my system, I started feeling like I actually wasn't functional anymore. I felt the buzz of the city and I felt my soul crying out to reconnect back into nature. And I prayed very hard for an invitation. And lo and behold, an invitation arose and a friend was moving to Oahu from Big Island and she invited us to come take over her place. Uh, it's raining right now, it's raining a lot. <laughs> and we're off grid, we're on solar and hydroelectric, um, just living very, uh, in a very pure, pristine, etheric environment, which has provided an opportunity to reconnect in with what's really important, which are the elementals and our innate connection to nature. So I feel really grateful to have taken this step and have been supported along the way by our ancestors and our spirit guides and um, to help us move even more towards what our lives are what our legacy is is on on this earth in this earth you know i i so appreciate having you both with us and I actually invited you onto this particular show because you do represent the future i mean you're of course younger than Dwayne, kurt or myself um but you also are going you've chosen the direction that i believe humanity will ultimately need to go to how to how to live in nature and yet you still have your music you still have your internet, you're still connected, but you're living simply. And I think that the balance you are um, creating, that you're demonstrating, is where humanity is going. And I'm going to bring Dwayne and uh, Kurt back on. And how does that land for you guys? Does this look like the future of a healthy human existence to you guys? Yep. Yes, indeed. <laughs> indeed it does. And, um, and the counterpoint to that is the future we're actually creating for the world right now. Um, and I want to emphasize that in, the, in a little bit of time here and, um, and, and go back to media in the following sense, that uh, power in a democracy is the power to communicate and it, it is not only who controls let's say the profits of communication but who is in front of that camera and deciding what the camera looks at because that is the eye of consciousness of an entire civilization and so who controls that controls how we look and see the world and and that in turn impacts uh, our choices for the future, profoundly so. So um, I, I just want to say uh, power in the media is the power to see and it's the power to communicate and uh, that's what the mass media offers and we're not using it. That's my key point. It's one, on the one hand, it is powerful and we can just prove that again and again and again, but that doesn't mean we're going to use that power, even though, and this is critical, uh, if you do uh, the research on the communications law for this country and broadcast television, it says again and again and again 
And if there is ever a conflict between the public interest and the private interest of a broadcaster, it is always, always, always the public interest that will prevail. Stand up. Take back the airwaves. Let's move the communications of our our democracy uh, into a new era. That's how I feel. So, Duane, what are some steps? What are specific practical things? Because that's what we're focusing on all weekend. What are specific practical steps that we can do to take back the media or to influence the media in the proper direction? It's very powerful. Um, yeah, first of all, is to recognize, uh, even though the internet is powerful, uh, the broadcast television is, it remains a, a huge force in our society. And in the United States, on a single day, we watch the equivalent of more than a billion person hours of television. A billion person hours of, hours of television in a single day. And uh, to the extent that we can begin to move the attention uh, vehicle of television to more constructive uh, domains, actually much more interesting uh, domains, um, we're just drifting then as a civilization because that's where we get most of of our news still. Most of the time is from broadcast television. So I would simply say become a media activist uh, in whatever form, uh, local to national to global, television or the Internet. Take back the airwaves, take back the tools of communication, and let's begin a robust conversation about our common future. Thank you so much. Um, and we'll hear much more from Dwayne before he de- has to leave. I do want to start reading comments uh, from our Zoom room people and also people watching on Facebook Unify when I'm putting down here. That's why I kind of check what's happening on Facebook. And, you know, for anybody who is watching on YouTube or on Facebook, come on into our Zoom room. Um, it's a lot easier for us to read your comments. And I'm going to start reading comments in a minute. And it's easy. Just go to global peacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com, click register, and you can get all of the links to all of our shows for the next two and a half months free. Just use the promo code of new friend, promo code of new friend. Um, and come on in, come on into the Zoom room, and then it'll be easier for me to read what you have to say. Um, uh, Darina writes, happy Earth Day, everyone, as we celebrate every day as Earth Day. That's right. That's a big theme for this weekend. And she's coming to us from Ecuador. Uh, Welcome, Darina. Percy kind of responded to the question I had asked, and I'd love to hear other people's response to the question of what does this Earth Day, Earth Day 2022, mean to everybody? And Percy writes, my feeling towards this Earth Day is actually the same as my feelings towards all other Earth Days, that those of us who remember the first Earth Day may recall that it came about because we were worried about the state of our beloved planet. Still are, only it's so much further along. We still have to wake up to this reality and save ourselves while we have a chance. Thank you. That's right, Percy. That's absolutely right. Um, and a couple of other comments uh, from... Connie and Andrew, who we love, well, maybe we'll even hear from them directly. Uh, they write uh, that they're sending love from Loveland, Colorado, and welcome Connie and Andrew. Uh, Suzanne writes, and this is important, our topsoil is depleting. In the last 40 years, 40% of the world's topsoil has been lost. Without topsoil, no food. Um, and then she uh, provided a link of Sadhguru riding his motorcycle through Europe bringing attention to the soil. So uh, thank you for that. And Suzanne writes in response to what Dwayne was just talking about, I've not had a television for 30 years. So thank you. Um, uh, Finally, uh, Christina Islands writes, this is so beautiful, Destiny. Thank you for taking the leap, inspiring us, leading from such a connected example. Bring up Destiny for, as I say that. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew, is there anything you'd like to say? Oh, my gosh. Well, so much. Part of it of coming here, we're on a farm, and we just had a recent conversation with the other farm mates who also left the mainland, had a huge company doing grant writing and 
that they like we noticed that to do a leap like this there's a lot that has to be let go of to make space for being with mold issues or inconveniences or being uh internet going out at times and uh and letting go of a lot of personal things that don't ultimately lead, might make us comfortable but don't lead to happiness and really inviting that consciousness of to give more is abundance to to have less that we comfort ourselves with that may not be necessary and that's one part for me of being here and then letting go of um closer tighter knit communities for me to be more out in the country meant i had to kind of dig more inside myself and find a little more base of because i'm an extrovert to the max and needed to kind of come in and develop more of a personal relationship with with spirit and wholeness that was less contingent on external factors uh -huh. <laughs> beautiful thank you destiny it looks like you wanted to say something yeah yeah that sorry that piece is is big um stripping away so much so then we can find what's real and that was the intention of like we are congested with false programming with this false belief that we have to have all of this stuff to be comfortable or successful or this image what happens if we strip it away now while we're young and start <laughs> start taking the steps towards the the vision that spirit has given us for our lives which is to be holding large ritual communal space to bring people back into what's really valuable, which is our connection to our essence, which ultimately is our connection to our earth and to our inner nature. Mm, beautiful. Plug, plug one book while we're here. The, uh, this book's been really helpful for us by uh, Maladoma Somme, that a lot of this, I think you mentioned ancestors right when we began and realizing the huge cutoff, even as we progress as a culture, that we were raised in a cut culture cut off from ritual, nature, and community. That those three, especially if we were in cities, were not woven together. And that uh, that's the real healing is that we, you know, we have to come. Media is, is important to come in, to come together in media and put out the right messages and the spirit message. But the most important thing to me and is to bring people together so to get clear and refined and clear away all that isn't real and then come back together in that essence and we are super powerful um we have such an ancient technology inside of us of being able to connect on the etheric realm on the spirit realm when we're together in shared space so this is one super cool way we can do that through the computer that we're we're connecting our world and here we are somehow together yet apart but also that power and, and I think COVID really sparked that for us of like, oh, we've been stripped away from gathering. That is our superpower. We have to gather to be able to remember. Yeah, and now we gather, of course, it's wonderful when we can gather in person, but now we gather internationally, you know, we've got people from the Philippines and all over Canada and North America and Ecuador. I think we've got five continents represented here. Um, uh, and so it's it's pretty incredible. Um, I've gone to all of us on screen, all of our panelists. Kurt, Dwayne, how does what Destiny and Andrew have to say, how does that impact you? What do you guys have to say about that? Well, I was going to hearken back to both what Dwayne and Destiny and Andrew said, because if we look at cosmology, you look at the great cosmologist, Teilhard de Chardin, the Jesuit, and he said, we really th live in three simultaneous realms, geosphere, biosphere and noosphere and we used to think that the geosphere the physical world and the biosphere the world of living things were separate now we know of course from plate tectonics that it's really the plate tectonics that creates the liquids and the gases that then afford the emergence of life but the noosphere is the idea in the human mind the stories that we're telling ourselves and as all of you have pointed out the real bad apple in the apple cart is the stories that we've been telling ourselves that allow us to abuse Mother Earth and abuse Mother Gaia. So that is why this message about media is so important because understanding that the bad apple is really the way we are operating in our behavior and consciousness, we can work from the top down to change that story and change that direction 
And that will then pull everything back into alignment. Because like I said at the beginning, evolution, when it's left unimpeded by our crazy ideas, will always move in an altruistic direction. So that's the mandate for this message. That's what you're doing every week. And certainly everybody in their art and music, wonderful stuff. Oh, thank you. I'm going to read a few more comments and then go back to Dwayne. By the way, Dwayne, uh, you have a fan who's watching, Jan Kaplan, uh, who's actually one of our senior producers. She's watching on Facebook. But she was very excited that you're going to be on the show. And she's been a, a fan of your books going way, way back. And Jan actually writes, teaching children about the sacred relationship with the earth is primary and can be done at home and in school through books and media. How can we disrespect the earth who gives us so much is the question Jan asks. And a couple more comments, and then I'm going to go to you, Dwayne. Connie and Andrew write, yes, Destiny and Andrew, shifting our vibratory level into abundance thinking, where we give what we have and receive more than we can fathom. It's another frequency where the laws are expanded, truly a new reality. You are embodying unity in diversity. Um, and then Eve uh, writes, Eva writes, for me, this Earth Day is a reminder that we must continue to advocate for change and that I must personally do what I can to care for the planet and for all. Thank you, Eva. That's what it's all about for sure. Dwayne, I'm going to put the spotlight on you and ask you to tell us a little bit. You've got some really beautiful offerings that you're providing. Um, and thank you for the generosity. You're offering the book that you wrote free of charge. Tell us about the book. I'm going to go to the website and show people how they can order it. Uh, the book is called uh, Choosing Earth. And it's the fifth book I've written. And uh, it builds on a half century of uh, prior research looking into the deep future. And that's one of the key differences of this book. It not only looks a few years ahead, it looks 50 years into the future. And there are hundreds of, of references in this book. And it is deeply researched. It's not a casual uh, exploration of the deep future. It's, a, it's an in-depth inquiry, the likes of which I have not encountered. So uh, it takes us on a very demanding and difficult ride. It's, it's hard to read in some respects. It's exhilarating, uh, just like a roller coaster ride can be, to read in other respects when you see that we're going through a time of great initiation as a species, uh, a time of transition from our adolescence to our early adulthood. And that, as we know from our own personal experience, can be very tumultuous uh, to go through our adolescence. In the same way, we shouldn't expect it be, to be any different for uh, a whole planetary uh, species to move into our uh, early adulthood. So we're on a, a journey that in many ways we all already recognize, uh, but it's going to be fresh and new and challenging. It's never happened anything like this in human history. Yeah, we're, it's, we're in for quite a ride, and I think your book probably shares that with us. So to get the book, everybody, go to choosingearth.org. That's the name of the book. It's the name of the website, choosingearth.org. And in case people don't see this, Jean Houston, one of the great minds of our time, uh, she's been on our show a few times, she's brilliant, Listen to what she says. She says, Choosing Earth is the most important book of our time. And that's coming from Jean Houston, probably one of the best well-read, well-informed, well-educated women that I know. So that's a remarkable thing. Anyway, go to choosingearth.org um, and then go to, um, you'll see where the book is right here. And you can just download it as a PDF, and that way you get the book right away. Uh, if you prefer and you want a print book, you can go to Amazon and you can get an ebook for tablets, or you can get the print book by going to Amazon. So, um, and let's all definitely subscribe to the newsletter. That's really, really important. Right. And, and so I really want to encourage everybody, like right now, while I'm talking, just like I'm doing, you know, subscribe to his email so that we can stay in touch Oh, it always asks me for these things. Let's see. And then I get them wrong when I'm doing it on the on the show. Um, 
someday someone's gonna have to explain to me like when it says choose all traffic lights there's actually only lights here but there's a traffic light machine and it's and then it makes me do the stairs oh my gosh it's always so embarrassing okay, hopefully i got it right there we go we appreciate captcha hey you know not only does he have a book but he also has a video um and so um uh we're going to go to that in a moment and tell us a little bit about the video um, and i'm going to go to that right now well, uh, this is a film or documentary, I'm not sure what to call it, uh, an hour and 10 minutes or so uh, that my wife uh, created at the same time I was writing the book Choosing Earth. And so this is her original creation. And you could even watch a minute or two of the uh, trailer there and get a taste for it. But... Um, it, it's a documentary that pulls together all of these threads uh, describing what we're facing as a species right now, right now. Um, and not simply climate change, but also species extinction, resource depletion, especially water, uh, an overextended population that we cannot support with the resources that we're currently configured to use, and so on. So we're facing an extraordinary crisis as a species, and this film gently but, but powerfully just lays it out so we can see it, receive it, and hopefully learn from that. Wow, well, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And by the way, you can find um, the film by going to choosingearth.org forward slash video choosingearth.org forward slash um, video and that's how you can do that um Dwayne I don't know uh I know that you have a lot going on so if you need to uh take off you are welcome to do so but I'm going to bring on your comrade Kurt to uh maybe wax poetic for a moment about Kurt how has Dwayne impacted you and what's your awareness of how Dwayne has impacted our world well among so many people, Dwayne is one of the most beloved and certainly within the evolutionary leaders. Like they always say, Dwayne's always there for us and they go through the list of the others that are always there for us. But without people who have championed this holistic vision and then how it relates to these most critical crises, we'd be in far worse shape than we are. So it's people like Dwayne and others and people who blow that trumpet and beat those drums that are so important. And I think, you know, I'm probably going to show a little later, we're doing a special on Voice America with the evolutionary leaders that begins with Duane and Duane's book, and then follows on a whole nother group of major earth related thought leaders. So we'll go into that down the line. But absolutely, uh, one of the great blessings now is that science, particularly now with how we know, uh, with the new view of evolution as cooperative, and not competitive, at least now, finally, mainstream science is also on the same page with that, that message that has been there from wisdom for, for millennia. So uh, we can't say enough about Duane. Yeah, beautiful. Duane, thank you so much for blessing us with your time and energy tonight. God bless you. And thank you for 50 years of service to Mother Earth. Let's all twinkle Duane while we have him on camera for just another minute. 50 years of service and Dwayne, I can't, I hope that uh, 50 years from now, we're doing another show with you. Uh, and it's like somehow humankind pulled it together. All right, I'm gonna go to uh, Destiny and Andrew uh, for some music um, uh, because we always like to combine music with what we're learning. And so uh, Destiny, Andrew, what do you got for us tonight? We're going to play this song that actually I actually wrote this quite a few years ago. It was on my first album. And this song is about removing all of the obstacles in our way uh, as we are on the journey towards our life path. And I feel like for all of us as humanity, that journey, our life purpose as human species is to remember our oneness, mm -hmm. to remember that Earth is not only our mother, but our greater body. I don't need to know that defense is grown so old. So I put it in the soil 
Oh, that was just awesome. I love you guys so much. It's so Thanks, wonderful to have you sharing your sweetness and your purity and and just as beautiful. And thanks for bringing Ganesha. Yeah. You know, boy, if the world ever needed Ganesha, the remover of obstacles, now is the time, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love Ganesha. I love him. Destin and Andrew are going to play another song a little bit later on tonight, and they're going to be with us again tomorrow night. But for any of you who want to get more of them, um, I'm going to take you to two places. Uh, Destiny has a link tree. And for those of you who watch our show, you see a lot of our artists um, use a link tree. It's a great way to connect. So the most important thing is to follow Destiny. Go to any of these However you get your music, Bandcamp, Spotify, iTunes, Facebook, go to all these places and click, click, click and uh, follow Destiny so that we can raise. So the, the, the gods of um, the algorithms will shine upon <laughs> Destiny. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Indeed. Absolutely. And again, uh, that's uh, if you just go to Linktree um, and find Destiny uh Destiny Love Music. And also find that at destinylovemusic.com if that's easier to remember. Oh, well, that's good to know. I'll go there next. I, I will go to destinylovemusic.com. But wait, there's more. There's Andrew. 
And um, Andrew, her beloved husband, uh, also has a website. And we're going to go there for a moment. And it's andrewlovejones.com. Andrew Love. And tell us, tell us about Papa's in Progress, Andrew. I don't know about this. <laughs> Well, I realized as a new father that we need so much support and that especially during when I watched during the birthing process that there's this monumental change happening in the woman, which is a natural process. And then we're going through this whole process and a lot of us is trying to gather strength to support this process. And so if, if one doesn't have a counselor or one doesn't have a men's group, uh, which is really helpful, that uh, I like to step in and help papas realize what is the art of surrender while increasing leadership. And a lot of that is emotional work and ancestral clearing because there is so much baggage that's going to get reawakened for, you know, a great majority in the every new step of the birth and the young child and the child getting older and that we need all the support we can get and the clearing of lineage and being able to emote and feel where we were when we were tiny or what was dysfunctional in our family line so that the new family has more of a chance for wholeness communication integration uh, I'm noticing that Eleanor Joy, one of our regulars, is writing, how about a birth doula for men? Um, <laughs> and, and Wanda writes, Andrew, what an awesome concept for papas. Thank you. Oh, you're um, welcome. She also writes, Destiny, you bring another dimension to destiny. Thank you so very much. <laughs> and we um, were quite lucky because our midwife was incredibly skilled. She was a shaman. She would just bring us into these deep tearful emotional ancestral clearings and and it, it really saved us and put us in the right uh possibility to succeed as a family beautiful uh well thank you for being with us and very inspiring having you with us and we'll have you do one more song in a little bit is that okay great fantastic um well i'm gonna go back to kurt um and i'm gonna add kurt and i'm going to add robin uh, and love to hear what some of the thoughts are that come up for you at this point in our in our program tonight. Kurt? Well, one that comes up for me and Destiny and Andrew just talked about, if we really talk about the thresholds of paradigm shifts that are going on now toward the potential of what humanity could be, one of them is this recapturing of our ability to understand the subtle realms. And we see all over the world now from what we're learning from indigenous peoples and also from the great traditions when we go into them deeply mystically, that every possible experience of the highest levels is available to every person because of our true nature. And if we're just able to actually be in that resonant relationship with nature, with each other, uh, then we're advancing just the whole destiny, pardon the pun again, of, of the type of human being that, that we could be. So I'm just so glad that that came up. Yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, I, go ahead, Robin. Yeah, I mean, I, I just um, have a question, you know, to put out there to everyone here. Um, how are we gonna turn this ship around? So, you know, we, in the transformational arena, think of miracles sometimes. We also think of consciousness tipping points. But as we see it now, and I'm sure Kurt has some, some comments on this, we're headed in, the ship's headed in a certain direction, which seems to be towards uh, uh, fascists and, um, you know, people like uh, the um, Brazilian leader just going like, let's just destroy the whole Amazon. We, you know, we're, we have a, a tremendous um, momentum in that direction. So I'm, I'm just putting it out to everyone because it's a very serious consideration. What are we looking to, toward to turn this ship around? Well, you know, one thing that's always happening is that when things happen that are bad, it actually so often is putting the spotlight on where the attention needs to be. And I think one of the silver linings on the cloud may be now that if we 
as a world people see behaviors that are just so abhorrent that they're just at the deepest level of our being. We just reject those forms of behavior. But there's all of these revolutions going on. And the other one that we haven't mentioned, but it's lingering everywhere here, is the understanding of the divine feminine and the divine feminine across the masculine and the feminine and what it means to take care, to love, to be concerned about detail and nurturing and beauty. And as that arises in the human species, it not only brings that creativity to build new orders and new social structures, but to actually say no to atrocities and to bad behaviors that just at the absolute gut. I remember when Zelensky said the other night, I just honestly don't understand this behavior, even as a human being. So we have to hope we're maybe at one of the last gasps of that kind of bad behavior, but there's just so many factors going on and the transformative community, which of course is the name for all of us, every one of you, every one of you on this program and listening, you're all doing something really important to trim tab that ship, to turn it in that other direction. And that's just what we have to keep on doing 24 seven. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Um... And very similar to what uh, Wanda writes, Wanda writes, Robin, the winds can change the direction of the ship, and we are the winds. Uh, Eleanor Troy writes, in Canada recently, there's a couple of baby steps being taken to collaborate more with the Indigenous people. God knows we need that. Uh, they have ancient wisdom with Mother Nature, etc., to guide us. Um, and Connie and Andrew uh, write, we are cleansing out old behaviors that were a response to a lower frequency of fear, separation, and scarcity. We are transmuting these energies for all of creation, and we're doing a great job. The earth is a higher frequency now calling us forth into new behaviors and systems. Um, so thank you for that. And Omashar, one of our beloveds, who we love Omashar and all the music he provides and his wisdom, writes, The Return of the Divine Feminine is the number one prerequisite to turn this ship around. And yeah, I think that's, you know, and it's all part of it, the return of the divine feminine, all of us raising our vibration. And we see that in so many different ways on this show on the awakening world, uh, whether it's our spiritual teachers like the twin Ray or um, the other spiritual teachers, Marianne Williamson, who we had last week, who's going to be on again next week. And um, in a moment, I'm going to turn it over, by the way, to Lori Grace. Um, uh, Lori is actually sponsoring this weekend of uh, uh, the Awakening World. And we're really grateful for that. And um, I'm going to put the spotlight on you, Lori. Uh, well, there you are. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to have you with us. I'm noticing the internet connection seems to be a tad slow on your end. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to hear you and see you. Um, Lori's coming to us from the Bay Area, as you can tell. She's got the Golden Gate Bridge behind her. But Lori, you've been, I've known you for mm -hmm. 35 years and you've always been an environmental activist. You've done so many things to help our world. You fought the fight <laughs> you won against PG&E. Uh, many years ago in a political fight. You've done a lot. And what would you like to share tonight about your concerns and some of the solutions that you're working to bring to our world? Uh, well, one of the concerns that I have is that we won't really be having fish in the ocean by 2040, except for some small fish here and there. And that'll be another contribution to mass hunger. So, um, so I always like to make sure I think of possible solutions or directions to move in that are really concrete in order to address this. And I will be showing a movie which you can all watch on Netflix, but you might find it pretty depressing uh, called Seaspiracy. And that is why our oceans are getting rapidly depleted and how that can affect our oxygen supply in the planet and also the 
the terrible loss of um, uh, fish that is going to happen because of the voracious desire for eating tuna. Tuna is the worst. So I will be, the movie describes it. You can go watch it on Netflix. But what I'm doing in the presentation that I'll be giving at Sunrise Center is showing concrete ways with this organization, that organization, what you can do with your diet, where you can, um, what you can promote that will enhance the chances that we will have um, a moderately, um, an ocean that's got some fish, you know, uh, and at Haleakua at my uh, place in, in Maui, you know, what I learned a long time ago when I saw the first movie, The End of the Line, about uh, the depletion of the ocean by fishing and fishermen, was that uh, there's terrible, there's a terrible kind of distress that happens when a fishery collapses and people lose enormous numbers of jobs. And then that happened in the cod fishery in, um, in uh, uh, Maine and Massachusetts. And what happened that helped some is they, they started moving some of the fishermen who loved fish <laughs> to fish farming, where now they are raising barramundi. And then in Hawaii, where there's also depletion and where there are endangered species and spe species like um, certain kinds of whales, monk seals, dolphins that are starting to go very, very hungry for lack of food. We're, we're going to, in my small farm, be raising tilapia organically, which is very different from the tilapia you buy even at Whole Foods, which is fed uh, the feces of chickens. And, uh, and we're going to raise them organically and really try to educate people that the future of preserving fish on the planet lies with the human species. And it has to do with quality fish farming and also that we want to create fish that is healthy to eat, that is not loaded with toxins. So that's some of what we'll do, and we're a small farm. So all we can do is teach through the university system and spread it. So, but I'm going to discuss a lot of different things um, in this evening, and we'll be open to plenty of questions and answers. So when you see a movie that is totally depressing, you won't just compartmentalize it, take a drink of wine and move on your life, but you'll say, wow, there's certain things I can really do. And I probably do it in the late afternoon because um, doing it in the evening, people would be too depressed to probably see the rest of it. So, uh, so it's a longish movie, but it's a, it, it is a start of a disaster. And, um, you know, one of the things that I learned was that the phytoplankton that create three quarters of the oxygen that we breathe on this planet are nourished by fish feces and the movement of fins in water. So if we decimate the population of fish on the planet, we will be decimating the amount of oxygen we can breathe. So if you just say, oh, I don't eat fish, I'm a vegetarian or I'm a vegan, you're not looking at the full picture because you do need oxygen. So anyway. Well, yeah, thank you, Laurie. And, and you know, these are hard things for us to have to deal with, but it's, I really appreciate you've always been someone who points in the direction of things that we need to be aware of that may not be comfortable. Um, Wanda writes a question for you, Laurie. She says, Laurie, have you reached out to Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Campfire Girls and the like? They need to work, they need to earn environmental badges what a great resource you are. So that's an interesting idea. It could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, there also, I will also want to let you know, the water in the ocean is getting progressively warmer and warmer and coral will be dying. And, and it's also more and more acid. In fact, it's going to get 
be like soda water, okay? And start dissolving and working on the shells of mussels, clams, and lobsters. And I wanted to let you know that there's research being done at the California Academy of Sciences to create a coral that can survive in warmer water and they're being successful. Wow. Um, I'm going to bring Kurt on to. So you can, can mm -hmm. um, uh, a couple comments, and then I'm, I've got Kurt on with you, Lori. Michael uh, in our Zoom room mm -hmm. writes A lot of people are overwhelmed with climate change and its impact on our survival. Mm -hmm. Educating oneself and your friends about solutions to climate change is a starting point. So, question for both of you. What is helpful is focusing on local solutions that are simple. What are some local solutions that either of you want to offer? Well, I want to mention a couple of surprises. First of all, you know, all of you who know me well know that as a mainstream biologist, I was just blown out of the water when the evolutionary paradigm changed from the competitive view of evolution to the cooperative view of evolution. I never thought that reductionist mainstream science would become an ally of the transformative message. But as uh, Grace just said, there are amazing things going on that they're discovering in what's called post-climax biology. I'll just run that by in a little bit. You know, nature is regenerative and it moves toward it, uh, complete regeneration to what's called the climax level. But when we go out and we disrupt it, it gets to a point that's called disclimax where it can't regenerate again. So for instance, if, if you would have gone to Kansas in the 1700s, you could have stood on the saddle of your horse and still not seen over the tops of the grasses. Now we're lucky if we can see grasses even six inches high there. And that's a, we, we've created a disclimax in our entire central United States. And that's why people like Bolsonaro in Brazil say, why should you tell us not to disturb the Amazon when you already destroyed the entire Plains Prairie system of, uh, of North America? And there's some truth to that. But what's happening now, and this is happening in this coral reef research, amazing things they're finding out now by rebuilding substrate, changing the chemistry a little bit, not only can you get the reefs to regenerate, but they regenerate at a faster pace. So if you actually go online and you, and you just Google uh, coral reef regeneration, it's just amazing. So we may surprise ourselves just in the sense of the ingenuity of human beings, in the sense of post-climax solutions we can come up with. Well, that's, that's so to follow up what he said. So if you want to do a real action step instead of just an idea, you join as a member of the California Academy of Sciences, you take a trip to um, their, you look, listen to their programs on coral. You encourage other people to do that. You can make minor donations or more major. And then one of the most interesting things that is totally simple, stop eating tuna. Tuna is the worst fish possible for, um, for hurting the ocean because the bycatch of dolphins and sea turtles for every tuna, every piece of tuna you eat is very big and that there are dead dolphins thrown overboard and dead sea turtles from tuna. So stop eating tuna. You know, on the movie, they say stop eating fish, but you know, some farm stuff is probably okay, but the tuna is also loaded with mercury. So you could really help yourself. So that's a simple action you can do. Thank stop you. Stop eating tuna. All right. So let's all stop mm -hmm. eating tuna and also join the California Academy of Sciences. I've brought Robin and Destiny and Andrew back on for a minute. And I'm going to read something that Connie wrote. Uh, Connie and Andrew wrote, when we trust and listen to our hearts and watch the signs of the universe and take bold, committed action, we contribute to the collective consciousness. And then she's providing the very beautiful book that they wrote, The Trust Frequency. So I, I'll, um, I'll open that up and just show people that for a minute. And this is a wonderful, wonderful book that Connie and Andrew, they're two of our favorite people who are regulars have provided, uh, they come on and you can go to, where is it here? Um, here we go. Uh, welcome to The Trust frequency and you can just go there by going to the trustfrequency.net the trustfrequency.net 
register and good things will come your way uh, from Connie and Andrew. Thank you so much, Connie and Andrew. Robin, um, anything you'd like to add to the conversation before we conclude with some music? Yes, um, thank you very much. First of all, thank you all for being here. It's, it's been amazing and so important. Um, I just wanted to say that I have been uh, for the last three years working on an advocacy project of something that's very simple for the world to do. And we would save hundreds of millions of tons of CO2 annually if we just did this thing. And you wanna know what this thing is? What is this it? Thing is turning off your vehicle when you're parked. If you keep your eyes open, you're going to notice a lot of people are running their gas vehicles when they're parked. Now, we don't want gas vehicles, but it's also a great issue to um, get people aware of emissions dangers, because if you were aware of that, you wouldn't be running your gas vehicle when you're parked with your dog and your kids, because it actually a, a University of Surrey research shows that the, um, the emissions get the emissions, <laughs> the emissions get into your car as well. So anyway, there's lots of reasons to turn off your vehicle when you're parked, but I think it's a real, I think that the, uh, I just, I posted an article in the chat. That's my article with the trends magazine with we.net, we the world.net. And um, I think the power of such an issue, and you can find lots of issues that we don't pay any attention to that could do a lot of good. The power of such an issue is that it creates awareness. And, and from my view, that's, that's gonna help turn the, the ship around is, is being mindful of what we're doing and how it impacts us. Even the things we don't notice that seem every day and just not on our minds. If we all kind of pick something that is our thing. I picked it because I noticed it and it was like, oh my God, I can't believe people don't know to turn their cars off. If you just pick one thing and you get other people to be mindful of it, I think that's a beautiful way to, um, to nudge people towards a, a more conscious world. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. And thanks again for everything you've done. And we'll see you again tomorrow night um, and again on Sunday. Um, and I'm going to go to uh, something really cool that uh, our friend Kurt has been working on. Um, Kurt, tell us about what you're doing with Voice America and Choosing Earth. Well, I think as everybody knows that the evolutionary leaders had this award-winning book, Our Moment of Choice, last year. And it's coming out in paperback from Simon & Schuster in May, actually May 3rd. So we actually have created an entire year of programming at Voice America based on that theme, and we're calling it Humanity's Moment of Choice. And we're going to actually be looking at this pivotal moment in history through all of these lenses of all of these thematic issues. So the first one, Timed Around uh, Earth Day and starring Dwayne Elgin and others, uh, the first one in this series is called Choosing Earth, based on the title of Dwayne Elgin's book. And it starts with Dwayne, and he actually sets the table. And then we go to David Corton, who you, I think you know is a New York Times uh, bestselling author of The Great Turning, uh, When Corporations Rule the World and Change the Story, Change the Future. So he follows Dwayne, and then we go to uh, Richard Clugston. And Richard Clugston is the chair of University Leaders for a Sustainable Future and also a member of the original Earth Charter Commission. So he really fills us in on the Earth Charter. And I think some of you may know that one of the sad things in our history was the inability of the United Nations to embrace the Earth Charter because the Earth Charter is really so comprehensive, it really threatens the current dominance hierarchies worldwide. But it's really the most powerful document around. And then we go from that to Jude Curvan talking about the cosmology of our moment of choice. Laura George talking about her new, her new book, The New Human, that follows on Barbara Marks Hubbard's work. And then Scott and Mitchell J. Rabin join us to talk about these programs. So I'm laughing a bit because I've already recorded in past tense what I'm watching happen now. And I had to tell Scott, when you appear on the show, talk in past tense. So as of April 28th, 24-7, uh, Choosing Earth, 
uh, from this new series, uh, Humanity's Moment of Choice, will be up at Voice America. You can find it easily by Googling the Convergence at Voice America or just going to the Convergence Voice America Facebook page and the scheduling will, will, uh, will be there. And I just also wanted to mention that. Uh, joining us also on that program to sign off with a blessing were two really wonderful yoginis, uh, Beth Shaw and, uh, and Karuna. So it's a great program and uh, it's really inspiring, challenging and informative. And it's great that Scott gives a good summary of this entire program as part of the Voice America broadcast. Oh, thank you. It was an honor to, to do that with you. A reminder, everybody, please keep yourselves muted. Um, we appreciate that we've got 60 people with us, but you got to keep yourselves muted, everybody. And Kurt's going to be back with us uh, in two or three weeks, um, May 6th through 8th, or May, yeah, May, May 6th through 8th. Our shows are all about our moment of choice with Kurt, Deborah Moldau, Jude Curvin, a lot of the people that... Uh, that have contributed to that book uh, are going to be joining us. So, Kurt, God bless you. Thank you so much Thank for you. all that you do. Uh, uh, you're uh, amazing. 200 articles. How do you do that? That's incredible. Uh, all right. Well, I want to read a few more final comments, and then we're going to close out with some music from Destiny and Andrew. Um, Tarina writes, beside the trend toward regenerative and biodynamic farming, which fortunately is becoming more mainstream, Dwayne Elgin's call for voluntary simplicity, that was a book that he wrote, and Janine Benaiz's invitation to apply more biomimicry instead of our mechanistic solutions to the climate crisis will be key solutions for better sustainable and thriving future on our precious earth. Gaia Pachamama. Thank you very much, Dorina, for being with us. Um, uh, yeah, Lynn, in response to what you wrote or said, Robin, Lynn writes, yes, many people also sleep in their cars with their air conditioning on while waiting for the children at school, sports practices, etc. So there are these little things. Stop eating tuna. Turn your car off. Um, Michael writes, Michael Lapelli writes, Transportation contributes the most to increasing greenhouse gases. Support your local communities in advocating for safe, low-stress bike networks that connect all of our daily needs to allow us to get out of our cars. Absolutely. Um, Connie and Andrew, thank you again for all of your contributions. Um, Wanda is asking you a question, Kurt. Does Voice America have a newsletter? And he writes, uh, not a newsletter, but a huge website. So um, I'll pull up the Voice America website while Destiny and Andrew are playing music. We'll take a look at it just before we leave. Um, all right. Uh, well, thank you, everybody, for your comments. Um, uh, Lori Grace, Cynthia Nelson from Unify sent you a big thanks, a lot of appreciation for what you shared. And I'm noticing several other people were appreciating you. Um, so thank you very much for all that you do. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and again, she mentioned uh, she's in the Bay Area and Lori loves to do live events. Remember live events where we actually hug each other and we're like in a room together. And Lori is located in the San Francisco Bay Area. She is going to be a big part of the New Living Expo, which is next weekend. Our whole show, Awakening World, is dedicated to a lot of the um, presenters who are going to be at the New Living Expo. That's going to be next weekend. We'll see Lori again. We'll also see John. Eight, six Ray. through eight. It's two weekends. Yeah, but on the two Awakening weekends, World. May yeah. six through eight. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm talking oh, about. Oh, that one. Yes. Our show. Yes. On our show next weekend. We'll be. The online. The online. Yeah. The online version is next weekend. The live in person version, where you can meet Lori Grace in person, is in two weeks. And you'll be hearing all about that next weekend. So, all right. I'm going to turn it over to Destiny and Andrew to complete this evening. Uh, you are such an inspiration to us. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you so much, Scott. We love you. Mm. 
So as we're tuning in, we're thinking like, which way and what ways can we make a big difference? And I feel like supporting clean water is important because as we provide clean water to our indigenous communities throughout the world, we're preserving the ancient technologies, which will bring us home to connection to nature and to each other and to the earth and to remembering uh, why we're here. Guys, that was awesome. Just uh, awesome. I've gone to gallery view so you can see people twinkling you away uh, and giving thanks. Thank you so much. That's I can just, hear the hoots, the hoots of approval. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Thank you. And if anyone wants to make a trip to Hawaii in August, we're planning a Singing Spirit Alive Embodied Voice Healing Retreat. We don't have the dates locked in yet, but we're looking at August. So just follow us on our pages and stay in touch. Well, as soon as you have the dates, let us know. We'll bring you back on. You'll do a song and we'll let everybody know about it. All right. Great. And they're going to be with us again tomorrow night. So definitely join us tomorrow evening um, where we have a lot of wonderful presenters lined up. By the way, I did find Voice America. It's very, they do have a huge website. Um, so if you go to voiceamerica.com 
and then just put in Kurt Johnson and boom, this pops up the convergence, uh, moment of choice. But there's so many wonderful podcasts on Voice America. But let's start with Kurt and what he's created. So thank you again, Kurt, Destiny, uh, Andrew, Robin, uh, Lori Grace. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And I love we had about 60 people in our Zoom room and, of course, hundreds watching on Facebook. Um, share this out. You know, this is really how we grow our audience. So please share this with people so people can learn from Kurt, enjoy and be inspired by Destiny and Andrew. Let's all really get this word out and let's all create a new earth together in a beautiful way. Um, yes, Percy, I agree. That was a sweet musical vibe from a sweet duo. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care, everybody. I hope to see you tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening.